10 years coming up on 11, and I've had a couple of space flights. Um, a few years ago, back in 2007, I was on Mission STS 118, which was doing construction of the International Space Station. Um, all those little smaller electronic gadgets, which we had designed for the space program, which you guys now have iPhones and MP3 players and all those things. Those the persistence of a space mad pupil and the support of school staff have seen a shuttle astronaut and a NASA rocket scientist touch down to give a master class in space science to pupils at one South Lanarkshire secondary. It was school ducks Ewan Park's interest in space that led to the Scottish Space School at Strathclyde University setting up the unique event. I found out about the space school the week it happened uh, from a friend because he knew people that were going and I went up to the office and just asked um, if they knew about it. They um, started talking to this uh, lady called Gail uh, Borland who works uh, in the school and uh, she told me all about the space school and she basically uh, just kept talking, uh, kept messaging, emailing, phoning uh, the guy in charge of the Scottish Space School and it was really harsh. I'd say she was the driving force that managed to get them come down, I, uh, getting the astronauts to come down. Um, I just complained about it and it all kind of falls through from there. A selected audience of around 200 pupils from Uddingston Grammar were given the chance to hear firsthand from Discovery Mission Specialist Alvin Drew what it's like to visit the International Space Station and to walk in space. On my first spacewalk, you know, I emerged out of that hatch and now there's no like little, I'm not looking at some little teeny, you know, hole at space. It's all wrapped around me, you know, as anybody's ever rode a motorcycle, it's difference between being in the back of a truck and riding on a Harley Davidson. It's just, it's a very different experience when you're out there in that space suit. And here we are above the Amazon jungles and I can see all the estuaries and rivers and all the dark green vegetation down there. And in this black sky and this thin limb of atmosphere. And how cool is this? Rocket scientist and aspiring astronaut Amber Gell took over to talk about where NASA is headed next. Now the last shuttle mission has flown. And people like you can design the spacecraft that will be used to take them farther. Does anyone play an instrument? Yeah. yeah. Oh, does anyone play bagpipes in here? <laughs> no. No pipers. They have a Christmas party that they have to, you know, enter to entertain at. So um, we have astronauts who play instruments and have bands and. Uh, you know, sing and do other stuff too, and so it, it's important to you know, make sure you have those as well. Both visitors were keen to emphasise to pupils that they've got to where they are through hard work and determination, and that's the lesson they wanted to leave behind at Uddingston Grammar. Yeah, the limits are really their sense of dedication and also their sense of self-confidence. I find that self-confidence is probably the bigger limit than anything else. Uh, people don't necessarily believe that they can take the next step when opportunities present themselves. Before today, I'd have had the impression that uh, that you guys were all sort of the, the super nerds and super jocks at school. We've got a completely different idea from what both you and Amber were saying. Yeah, we we all you know, did nerdy things. Uh, we weren't necessarily super nerds, but uh, but we were you know, played on ball teams. Uh, you know, did everything else and you know, went, went to dances and everything else. And it wasn't like we were sitting there in our in our rooms every night, you know, training to become astronauts. Now we were out living normal lives. That's why I thought the talk was so good. Just the fact that. Um, Instead of just um, talking about what they do, they actually try to inspire the kids and tell them that if they're interested in science, it doesn't matter how good you are at it. Or, uh, it's, it's about how hard you try, it's about how motivated you are, it's about uh, your drive and how much you want it. And I, I, think, I think that was uh, important. And when we were picking people uh, to have seats in the presentation, cause, I mean, half the school wanted to go, but there were only about 220 seats. We were, uh, me and the teachers in science, Mr Jaffrey, and, Mr. Sutherland were trying to make sure that um, the kids that got to go were the ones that were interested in doing science because we thought it would probably benefit them the most. But, I mean, there were kids there who weren't interested in science and stuff and maybe they've left that and uh, they're thinking about it a bit more and maybe we'll get some fu future uh, engineers and scientists uh, because of that talk. So, okay, so I said I didn't get to fly in space, but I did get to be weightless. Some people know it as the vomit comet. You have about 30 seconds of weightlessness in which you're able to test your experiment. These fellow pupils all agree the visit will leave a lasting impression. I've always been sort of interested in it, it's sort of a hobby, but now I'm, it's really given me an insight of how I could take it on as a career. It was very inspiring, like, you don't really know what you want to do with your life and then the way that they were phrasing it, you know, thinking about do you want to know why things work or how things work and that just directs you into what kind of field you want. It makes it so simple yet so precise that you just know what you want to do. Really interesting personalities um, and they were really good teachers as well. It was, they said a lot of interesting motivational things so I'm even more interested in space than I was before. It was really good words of wisdom to like to follow your dreams and everything and that will help me in following the career that I choose and I, so I really enjoyed it and everything they said was really interesting. Some people take a little longer than others to go figure out what, you know, 
what resonates, what, what, what lights them up. You know, I, I figured that out at five and a half, so I felt like I was very fortunate. Uh, and, and, and so I knew what I wanted to do. But you'll see, you, know, you see children all the time in, in high school, even in college, going, still don't know what I want to do yet. Nothing uh, tickles their fancy quite yet. But when you do find something like that, it's worth going and pursuing it. That was absolutely fantastic. And if you could just please give a big round of applause. <laughs> It was a great way to the end of the year. I mean, this is probably one of my last days in school. I might come in a few times just to hand in some books and stuff. So this is like a really good way just to kind of uh, end my, my time at uh, secondary school.